Nothing of it. Yeah, but that's because you're guided by your God. No, not at all. You, you've already conceded. No, 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 no. It's very, very simple. You've conceded you don't know what caused the original universe, yeah? Right? Yeah, but you don't know. No, no, no. I can't prove God. I can't prove a creator. You're right. You're sorry. Yeah. No, no, right, right. So I can't prove this creator. All I can do is produce my evidence why I believe it's so. But you can't produce anything because you don't know. No, but no one knows. Right, but I'm. Scientists don't know. Right, but at the same time. All the scientists and the whole. Why? World don't so why have you chosen? Why have you chosen? I don't know. Because we don't know. It's as simple. It's the truth. No, but why are you stuck there? How? How will anyone ever know? You're not stuck. No. Well, what do you mean? Well, eventually we'll find out. Right. So why are you not looking at the counterclaim? What God? A creator. Because it's all. Oh, because it's not. It's just not on, is it? Why is it not on? Because it's ridiculous. Why is it ridiculous? Why is it nonsense? Why is it nonsense to believe there's a power that exists outside of the universe greater than anything that exists within the universe? We just said science there's dictates no, that. There's no. There's no proof for it. There's no evidence. There is proof. There's a power outside the universe greater than anything within the universe. We've proven that. There's no, there's no evidence or proof for your claim whatsoever, and you know that. And you can't explain that. I can't prove God exists to you. Exactly. As you can't prove God doesn't That's exist to me. That's what I right, right. No, now you, I can't. Right, right. There so may you, be a God. There may right, be right, a God. right. So we have to. So, so. There's no evidence. For right, right. So what we have to do? You, you're staying there. You don't believe there's a creator, and you can't prove there's not a creator. No, and I'm standing here saying there is a creator, but I can't prove to the creator because it's beyond our comprehension. Okay. The next question is, no, 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 why no, no, no. don't you believe there's a creator? <laughs> Why? Because well, no for, for what for reason? There's no evidence for, for it. For what reason? When what when did you become an atheist? At what point? Uh, yeah, at what point did you stop believing in God? Everyone's born an atheist. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Really? So you're telling me everybody's born not believing in God? Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> are you serious? Well, what? Well, a baby is born not believing in God. Until what? You used to. Do you not realize not believing in God is a choice? No. What? Do you, you understand that, don't you? No one you choose not to believe in no God. Everyone is born with religion. Everyone is born no, 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 no. You, you, do you, you, learn, you do you religion. understand? Your parents, atheism your parents, is a choice. Your parents teach you religion when you grow up. Do you understand that or my not? Do you understand that basic were, logic? My parents didn't believe. Do you in God. understand that basic I'm logic? You choose. You choose not to believe in a creator. It's a choice. No, you don't yes, you do. No, you don't. The what? evidence is not there to believe in a creator. You're a baby. You're a baby. How can you, you have choice? You choose to believe in religion. You're a baby. How can you have choice? You choose. Human beings. Born atheist. How can a baby be born not believing in God? Because there's no evidence for it. Ah, 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 good question. Okay. A baby is not born believing in God, okay. but a baby is born a Muslim. Neutral. I'll explain why. I'll explain. I'll explain. I don't see anything with the explanation unlike you. I'll explain. So I'll say it again. A baby is not born believing in God, but a baby is born. But a baby. Every baby. Hindu babies, Chinese babies, your babies, your babies when you have them. All of them. All of them are born Muslim, according to what we believe, and I'll explain why. Yeah, but that's not true, though. Well, I, yes, it is true, and I'll explain why. It's not true. I'll explain why. How can you say it's not true and not explain why? Because you said all Chinese. Where is your logic, my friend? You're an atheist. You're an intellectual. Well, why don't you give me a chance? Let me explain. All right, all right. I'll explain. Born Muslim, aren't they? Yes, yes, they are. Let me explain. Let me explain. Right. Because what am I saying? Yeah, what am I saying? <laughs> I'm saying a baby. I'll address you actually because you asked the question. Yes, it's a fair question. Sure. Okay. Every single baby is born submitting to its natural instinct. Yeah? When it comes out of mother's womb, when it sucks on the teat, on all of these things, when it cries, when it's got a dirty nappy, and when it cries when it wants food. This is natural instinct that has been given by whom? Its creator. Because I believe in a creator. Okay. okay. Muslim means the one who submits to the will of their creator. So we believe all children, all babies, are all born submitting to the will of their creator. As are all animals submitting to the will of their creator. Because they only work on instinct, nothing else. Now a baby will be, act on instinct for a while. Then it'll start learning. Then it'll start being having impressions of its family put on it. So if it's a Hindu, it'll have a dot put on its head. If it's a Muslim, it'll have a topi put on its head. If it's a Sikh, it'll start growing its hair. Yeah? 
If it's an atheist, always up in earrings in and stuff. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the point here is this: in Islam, what we're told is that every single child, up until the age of puberty, up until the age of reasoning, every single baby born in this world today, up until every so forget baby, so not Christian. Then? Every single child, because babies are not born believing Jesus died for their sins. That's why. <laughs> you have to believe that to be a Christian. Babies don't believe that. Why are they born Hindus? <laughs> okay, because as Hindus you have to believe in Vishnu and Krishna and Ganesh and they don't believe that either. So what makes you right and them wrong? Right, because they are born submitting to the will of their creator. They are born submitting to their instincts. So why are you right and the others wrong? Do you believe babies are born believing Jesus died for their sins? Of course not. No. Right. Do you believe Hindu babies are born believing that uh, Ganesh had his head cut off and put an elephant head and all that business on? Do you believe, believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do, do you believe babies are born believing Moses parted the Red Sea? Not capable of no. Right. Can I, if I can continue with the lady, if I can continue with the lady, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you what you're saying. Don't say that. So all babies, even her, do you have children? Do you have children? I have lots of godchildren. How old are your children? Oh, you don't have any children. Oh, inshallah. You have children. No. You will have. And when a child is born, it'll be a Muslim. Okay. okay. Born into what I believe. Ah. And it, I want to say being a Muslim is not going to believe the Quran is the word of God and believe Muhammad is. No, no, no. I say submitting to its will. Submitting to the will of its creator, the one who created it. Just as a bird, when it hatches from its egg, it submits to the will of its creator. Just as a salmon swims upstream, it submits to the will of its creator. Just as everything in the animal kingdom, just as a caterpillar turns into a butterfly, it submits to the will of its creator. Muslim means, Islam means submission to God, submission to the creator. Muslim is the one who does that. In English, we put ER on the end of the word to show you doing the action. So if you walk, you're a walker. If you work, you're a worker. In Arabic, you put more in front of the word. So if you if you do Islam, you're a more Islam or Muslim. Okay. So all children, all babies are born submitted to the will of the Creator. We believe as Muslims that any child in this world, whether they're Eskimos, whether they're Chinese, whether they're Hindu, whether they're atheist, as long if they die before the age of puberty, guaranteed paradise. Yeah. They have got no accountability whatsoever on them. It's when they reach the age of understanding and they get to choose from themselves that they. Then accountability comes on. That's when their religion kicks in. So if they were brought up in a Christian family, that's when they become Christians. If they're brought up as an atheist family, that's when they'll become atheists. If they were Hindus, they become Hindu. Do you get me? Yeah, it makes a completely logical Thank you. argument. It totally makes sense. The, but the only argument here is whether there's a creator or not. Whether there's a creator. Yeah, fair enough. Right, right, right. Which is fair. And he's he's accepted he can't prove there's no creator. I can't prove there is a creator. Yeah, and so then uh, So no no no. Then the next question is why doesn't he believe there's a creator and why do I believe there is a creator? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's a nice logical step. Let's carry on. So why don't you believe there's a creator? There's no evidence. But that's not a reason not to believe in something. Of course it is. Okay. What if the nature of this creator okay, what evidence would you accept? Well if God parted the parted the clouds now and came down and said, Yes, oh, I am God, then yes, I believe. You believe God. probably, yeah. Why don't you believe in purple elephants from outer space? Do you believe in purple elephants from outer space? No. But why, why should why I? Don't you? Why should I? It's the same thing. It's the same. Really? Question. Why, why is it? No, I said is there evidence of purple elephants from outer space? No. <laughs> so why should I believe in them? No evidence of a creator. So why should he believe? Well, well, there, well, how can you say there's no evidence of a creator? I've not even told you the evidence of a creator. <laughs> because you can't. You don't have any evidence. Listen. There's, there's no evidence. There's no evidence. I said to you, I can't prove it. I can provide my evidence. You can believe in it. No. No. Belief is not reality. Okay, I can provide my evidence. He can provide his evidence, and we can look at the evidence and decide who has the stronger evidence. Clearly. Now, right now, his evidence is he doesn't know. That's his evidence. Right now. <laughs> now, he might bring something more substantial to the table, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm an agnostic. I don't know. Right, right. I don't know. But, all right, so in a court of law, evidence is not I don't know. Did he do it, my lord? I don't know. I mean, what kind of witness are you? You don't have to prove that. You don't have to. You, you, you never if you're trying to say to somebody, I'm a fool for believing in a creator, that he doesn't even know if there's a creator or not, yeah? How can he even say I'm a fool for believing in a creator? Well, you, I don't think he really is. I don't think he's saying that you are. I believe the creator outside of the universe, and outside the universe is that way. Is it? Well, it's not that way, is it? <laughs> I don't know. You're telling me. Going back to my point, so your claim is there's no creator. My claim is a creator. So I'm asking you, for all these people here, what evidence do you have for there's no creator? And your answer is, uh, where is he? Because where is he? Born. Where is he? Where is he? Right. And then I ask for the evidence you'll accept, and the evidence you'll accept is that it's part of the clouds. Yeah. No, no, no. You're lying. You see. You don't even know you're lying yourself yet. All right. So you're telling me. You've said to me your evidence is if the the cloud parts, and what a hand comes down or something. What do you want? What evidence do you want? <laughs> 
prove that this is the case. I said to you, if, if God parted the clouds and came down and said, I am God. I am God. Then, then you'll believe. Then I believe it. All right, all right. You wouldn't believe that yourself. You wouldn't. I, oh, oh, okay. I wouldn't believe that. Okay. No way would I believe that. So why would, why, why? No, because he, he, no, 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 no. I'm asking his, it's evidence. See, if you want to prove something and someone says, well, do this and that for me, then you'll prove it. Like, for example, say I'm a faster runner than you. People say, prove it. I say, well, let's have a race. And I beat you in a race, then I've proven to you. You can't prove God. Right. So, got no evidence for but how can you then ask for evidence if you have no criteria for evidence? No, I'm just asking you no. to prove it. Well, you just oh. said there's no evidence. You don't know what evidence you're looking for. But of course you won't got no evidence. You don't know what you're looking for. Yeah, you can't provide the evidence could be in front of your eyes. You don't know what you're looking for. But you can't provide it, can you? I can only provide the evidence you're asking. What are you asking? If you're asking for the clouds to part, we'll, we'll, we'll roll with that. No, I'm pretty no. sure David Blaine can make the clouds part. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you probably could. Yeah, right. I'm pretty sure satellite imagery. I'm pretty sure satellite imagery could pro project an image. Yeah, but you're, you're getting. Around. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I could drug you and you could hallucinate. I'm pretty sure. No, no. I'm saying to you, you will not accept that as evidence. Why? Because you can't prove. You're I can't prove, and you give me the criteria. The burden. What's the burden of proof you'll accept? Okay. In front of all these people now. Yeah. Prove your creator. No, no. What will you accept? Let me know. How can I prove it? What do you want? No, he, all right, in your... Okay. What do you, you, what do you want? You prove to us there's a God. Right, what proof will you accept? Eyewitness evidence. Eyewitness evidence? Yes. yes. So you believe everything you see? Every yes. yes. Really? So you're skirting around, and you're skirting around it again? Oh. Even an evolution What's in my hand? Evolution is a proven fact. Come on, come on, use your hand? eyes. What's in my hand? I can't tell what's in your hand. Why not? Because I can't. Oh, is it because your limited eyesight can't see through flesh and bone? Well, I don't have x-ray vision. Ah, hello. What's in my hand? <laughs> what's in my hand? How much? You got a right uh, Probably a ten. Right. Can you see it? No. Is it there? Yes. Can you see it? No. Is it there? No, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah? I'll yeah. All the time. Right. So, so, well, it proves that your eyesight is so limited, yeah, as using that as a burden of proof is ridiculous. Because a magician can... Oh, that's one part of it. You just said, you just said, seeing is believing. No, I know. No, seeing is not believing. In a trial, even circumstantial evidence. Even if you look at the sun, even if you look at the sun, even if you look at the sun, even circumstantial evidence is enough to prove someone guilty of a murder. Can you look at the sun? Yeah, if there's Oh, look at the sun. Look at the sun. Hey, look at the sun. Yeah. No, keep looking. Right keep looking. Uh, yeah, I see. No, it. keep looking. Keep looking at it. No, 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 no. Is it keep looking right at it. Just look at the sun for 20 seconds. Hold on, hold on. Can you look at the sun for 20 seconds? No. No, you can't. Can you? So now you're asking to look at God, and you can't even look at the sun. It's creation. Have you seen him? <laughs> Have I seen him? Yeah. No. Oh, all right. So you know your claim is because I'm not seeing God, God mustn't exist. No, but okay. Then where's your circumstantial evidence? Where's all your circumstantial evidence? Okay. Do you accept that I had a great, 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 great grandmother? Yeah. Why? Have you seen her? No. I haven't seen her. Too much. How do you, how, why must I? Because we know how genetics work. And how's that? Well, we know how. Pro I can't be here without that, can I? Without Al? I can't be here without my great 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 grandmother existing, can I? Who was Al? Right. But I don't need to see her, do I? We don't know you. Yeah, but, but you can, I don't need to see her, do I? believe in a God and a I don't need to see my great 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 but your belief is very Do I need to see my great 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 grandmother to know she exists? No, but right. Thank you. Thank you. You don't believe just in a creator, you believe in a very specific No, no, I'm saying to you. You're saying about seeing is believing, I've proven to you seeing is not believing. I could bring dying here will prove to you seeing is not believing. Now you've said about God, uh, how does God exist if you've not seen him? Well, I believe I had a great grandmother, I'm not seeing her either. So, what's your point? My point is that you don't know. Seeing, okay, here's your point. Your point was seeing is believing. Now your point is, I was wrong. That's not my point. Yes. Okay, so what it boils down to is you believe because it says so in your holy book. I certainly believe in Islam. So, I didn't believe because of what the holy book says. I'm not stupid yeah first you have to convince me there's a creator now I had a thought about whether there was or wasn't a creator it didn't mean much to me yeah religion was a joke at school when I considered it when I looked at the alternates that this universe evolved by itself from monkey evolution or all of this business random I, 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 that didn't add up to me when I thought about it when I reflected on it when I looked at the, the uh, communities of bees in 
common ants and all of these things. That how can all this have evolved from one common ancestor? It just made no sense to me. Yeah? So then when I looked at it, I realized there must be a creator. But that's not enough. All right, there's a creator. But then the next question comes out. Why is I believe there's a creator. Why did he create me? What is his purpose? Has this creator tried to communicate with us? To let us know why he created us and what he wants from us and if he's going to help us and such. And then all the religions of the world make... Yeah, I can tell you what the creator wants. I can tell you what the creator wants. Yeah? Now, beautiful thing was, I had a Jehovah's Witness come to my door and he had a beautiful book called Mankind's Search for God. And in that book, he went through every religion of the world. Confucianism, Taoism, Shintoism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Sikhism, Judaism, Christianity, it's like every ism you could think of. And what it would do is each... Uh, it did the work for me. It explained the religion and then why it's false. Explain the religion, explain why it's false. Except Islam. It had nothing to say about Islam. When, and I was shocked by that. So then, then I looked into it, then I looked at the claims that um, the Christians believe such and such because of their holy book, the Bible, and all the other holy books. So I questioned all religions of the world. I looked at Hinduism, is this a true religion of God? Well, a religion that encourages a caste system where a man is superior to another man due to how he's born, where he's born. It doesn't sound like a fair religion of God to me. Then I looked at Sikhism. The Sikhism is a combination of Hinduism and Islam. And I don't see why you need to mix Hinduism with Islam. So I reject that. So I basically rejected all of the... I mean, Buddhism is not even a religion. It's a philosophy. Yeah, and there's no God involved in Buddhism. Yeah? And same with Shintoism, Taoism and all of this. So I narrowed it down to the big three. Judaism, Christianity and Islam. So the Quran supports your belief? Your belief? Death. I haven't mentioned the Quran yet. No? Okay, I was just curious. <laughs> that's where we're going to. We're going there, don't worry. Okay. All right. So I looked at what the Jews believe. The Jews believe they're the chosen people. Everyone else is rejected people. We're their bounty to be used and abused for their, because they're the chosen people. And you can't become a Jew. You have to be born a Jew. Your mother has to be a Jew. It didn't sound like a religion of God to me. Then I come to Christianity. Oh, Christianity teaches, what does this teach? It teaches that one man sinned in the garden, and because of that, all men are, are taking the sin of that. And then for, to redeem that sin, God himself came down as a man to die so he could forgive us for that. I didn't buy that. Then I looked at why they, where they get the evidence for this. Then I reduced the Bible. Then I looked at the Bible and I realized that none of these people writing in the Gospels are eyewitnesses. Yeah? And then I realized that this has nothing to do with Jesus' teachings at all. This is church teachings. Yeah? Then I came to the Quran. Now the Quran was the only book that claimed to be the Word of God. Yeah? And the Quran claimed to be a guide for mankind. The Bible didn't make that claim. If you read the Bible, there is no guidance for mankind whatsoever. There's no criminal justice system within the Bible. Except if you go to the Old Testament where you stone the adulterers and all that business, yeah, chop the hand off the thief. But if you come to Jesus' time, the New Testament, there's no, you know, if you're a criminal, forgive the criminal. There's no punishment for rapists, there's no pun there's nothing. There's no guide to life. Now how to treat your neighbours, how to treat your wife, there's, there's, there's nothing. But the Quran is a complete guide. Now the Quran comes with something which the Bible avoids. The Quran has what's called a falsification test. Now this is miraculous for any religious book to have a falsification test. Because this is what scientists use. This is why Albert Einstein's uh, theory of relativity was so well accepted. Because he gives three falsification tests to his theory. So in the Quran, Allah gives two falsification tests. First falsification test, Allah says in the Quran. They say this is a book written by your Muhammad. Then let them bring their scholars and helpers from all of mankind. And come together and produce something like it. Just one chapter. And then he goes, and when they can't and they shall never, then fear him a fire whose fuel is men and stones prepared for disbelievers. So the warning is there. To this day, masters of languages, computer programs, whatever, cannot do that. But it's not a fair challenge to me or you, because you're not Arab and I'm not Arab. Yeah? Fair enough? So the second falsification test that the Quran puts in, which you can check out, Allah says, if this book was written by any other than the Creator, inside you shall find many contradictions and error. Because men make mistakes. Now this book is revealed over 23 years. And this book is not just gibberish. This book is historical. This book is contains elements of science. Now the amazing thing about science, science is transitory. Science is theory until history reaches a period where they can test the theory and then they can see whether they were right or not. And then if they're wrong, they tweak it and they change it again. Well, every single thing in the Quran that was uh, revealed 1400 years ago, scientifically, is correct 
correct today? So the question we have to ask ourselves, how could a man be so confident that everything he wrote in 7th century would be correct, read by today? This is evidence. See, you can only prove some of the science of the Quran wrong in the future. So if you speak to the, a companion of the Prophet and said, oh, when a fetus forms in the womb in the stage of the pregnancy and the zygote and this and that, and you know, talk about um, the shape of the embryo and this and that. This couldn't be qualified or confirmed because you need an electromagnetic microscope to actually see the shape and of everything. You can't, it's invisible to the naked eye. Okay. Up until the end of the 19th century, the European scientists believed that the sperm carried a mini embryo or the egg had a mini embryo already inside it. Okay. But the Quran described the, the process exactly as it is today. Yeah? So we have to question how, how did he get all this right? Yeah? And there was a man, not just me, there was a, a scientist called Maurice Bukai, and you can Google him. Yeah. And he was a French Egyptologist in uh, France, in Paris. And he heard that the, this, there was a mummy of a pharaoh um, being exhibited. It was supposed to be uh, Ramesses II from the time of Moses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I'm playing pharaoh. Ramesses II. Okay. And he asked, can I examine the body? And when he examined the body, he says this man died from drowning. And his colleague said to him, don't let the Muslims hear you say that. And he says, well, why not? It goes, because the Bible says that the Pharaoh's body was lost when the seas came together. But the Quran says that Allah took the body from the water to exhibit to mankind. And if you let the Muslims know this, that this mummy died from drowning, you'll confirm what the Quran says and show the Bible's wrong. Yeah? Now, the amazing thing about this mummy, how it fulfills that prophecy, because what, what's a prophecy? We shall make him an example to mankind. This mummy is exhibited in Alexandria. Alexandria is the most visited tourist destination in the world. Not just that, this mummy then is exhibited around all the museums. Yeah? It's fulfilling the prophecy. Okay. So he was shocked by this. So what he did, he took it a step further. He flew to Syria in the times of calm and he studied Arabic for three years and he learned the language of the Quran himself. Not I'm just curious. Do you know, do you speak Arabic? A little bit here and there. So, did you read the Quran in a different language? Did you read it? English. Okay, because I know when, in terms of Arabic, it can only be interpreted, it can't be mm. um, translated directly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the meaning of. Yeah, it's the yeah, nearest yeah. meaning. So, I was curious, like, and I'm not trying to argue with you, I'm just curious. No, you can argue all you like. Um, uh, so, which interpretation do you choose? Do you believe I, all right, I, I, or do you pick one that you I, I prefer uh, Marmaduke Pickford. Okay. Yeah, because I don't think he embellishes. Because a lot of the other interpreters, in brackets, you'll see a lot of things, yeah. which is their own interpretation. And, and, and like, for example, there's one uh, Muslim Khan, and Muslim Khan was born in Afghanistan, and he grew up in Saudi. So you can you will see his um, his tr translation has a lot of things in brackets. Yeah, and then you have Yusuf Ali, who was commissioned by the English to, to do his Quran. Do you get me? And uh, what Mahmud you picked for was the difference between him is he was already an author. He was already a writer. Okay. So the style he does, he does it in these and thous and you know what I mean yeah, Shakespearean yeah, yeah, like really nice Bible. but he doesn't embellish he doesn't try to interpret meaning he he tries to translate direct yeah do you get me and I'll be honest with you he'll do a much better job translating from the Arabic to the English than I would from learning Arabic yeah. and trying to translate yeah, it myself yeah, yeah, so though, I don't need to reinvent the wheel yeah. yeah so that's already done so what do you say to the people who do interpret it in a different way because like I remember reading there's a passage that can in, in the Quran and it can be interpreted give me, give, me, give, give me an example I can't remember exactly what it said what's it referring to like treat your wife equal to you right and like only go to bed with her when she agrees to do so and then there's another one that was like beat your wife and you know, no no don't. And the, both of them were interpreted correctly but like you get to choose which one no 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 it's, 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 it's the same verse yeah it's the same verse uh, right but, like you can yeah. interpret it no 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 ways and it's, what you got to understand is when you say beat what do you mean by beat I don't remember no 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 we, 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 we go there we don't mind you know. yeah you punch him in the face yeah. or whatever all right now, in the Quran it says to pray, but it doesn't show you how to pray. And then the Prophet shows us how to pray, and we pray as the Prophet prayed. And the, the Quran says to fast, and we don't know how to fast, it doesn't describe how you fast. Yeah. Then the Prophet shows us how to fast, and it says beat your wife. <laughs> the, Prophet, the Prophet shows us how you beat your wife. Well, right. what's interesting is like, no, listen, listen. Muhammad is so into like equal treatment of both men and women, and yeah, yeah, it's so great about him, and so I think it's strange that they can interpret parts of it, no. where they create, where, you know, women... No, but listen, listen, listen. So the Quran says beat your wife. So when the Prophet asked about this, how do you mean beat your wife? Okay, these are the conditions of beating your wife. 
then I want you to tell me whether this condition means beating. Then you'll understand how the Quran can't exactly be translated into English. Yeah. Oh, okay. First thing, can't cause pain. First thing. Second thing, can't strike the face. Third thing, can't leave a mark. Right? Okay. Basically, <laughs> this is the three things. Yeah. Um, and then he he uses an analogy of like a miswak. A miswak is like a little thing you brush his teeth. It's just a little flip. Uh -huh. Right. Now, what do we deduce from that? That this is no beating. Yeah. How can you beat your wife? What? I want to beat her. I can't hit her face. Off. I'm going to body. But I might hurt her. I can't hurt her. I, I can't leave her. What are we going to do? Yeah. Oh, flipping it. <laughs> you get me? You can't. You can't beat your wife. All right. Now listen, listen. But the amazing thing about this verse of the Quran, it's not saying beat your wife. It's saying don't beat your wife. The verse of the Quran is saying that. I'll tell you why. Because you've heard of crime of passion in the English law, where someone comes home, finds their wife in bed with someone else, and then they, they can kill. If, even if they kill them, it's, and they have a defence in court as a crime of passion. Their, their, their emotions were so high, and you know they weren't thinking straight, and this was a one-off. Okay. Well, in the Quran, you come home and find your wife in bed with your neighbour, and you want to flip and slap her. You can't. Yeah? What do you have to do? Oh, what are you doing in bed with yeah. After that, what do you do? Oh, sleep on the floor now. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then after that, then you can beat her. All right, come on, man. Realistically, anyone would love to beat their wife if they found their wife in bed. They, they, they'd flip. They'd beat the keys around. Them. They, they, they'd flip. As they do. I mean, in England, they beat their wives without reading the Quran. Yeah? The, the domestic abuse in England is out of control. Okay. Yeah? Without reading the Quran. Okay. But if they read the Quran, they couldn't do that. Yeah. So the, the this is the irony. The Quran saying, "Don't beat your wife." Uh -huh. that, that's the point. But guess what? The Quran said, this, <laughs> "The Quran doesn't say don't beat your husband." <laughs> so you guys are all right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I think that's awesome that it is such a peaceful religion. And so, what do you say to the people who interpret it the other way? Interpret it what way? The you know, like with jihadism. Okay. What is jihad? Jihad means. What does it mean in English? Doesn't it mean like you never attack first? No. Jihad means to struggle. The struggle? Okay, yeah, 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 I didn't That's what it means to struggle. Katala means to fight. Jihad means to struggle, to strive. So we strive against our own desires is one, one kind of jihad. Yeah? Getting up for work in the morning is a, is a jihad. Yeah? Getting up for prayer in the morning is, is, is a jihad. It's a struggle. Okay. Now, if you're talking about fighting and defense, this isn't the story. Because everybody fights and defends themselves. The Geneva Convention says everyone has a right of uh, self-defense. So every, everyone has a right to defend themselves. Yeah. So are you referring to anything specifically? Well, I mean, I just feel like sometimes Islam can be interpreted in a way that makes it violent when it shouldn't be in such no, no. a peaceful religion. Well, well, who's interpreting it this way? Ooh, I don't know. Okay, how many Muslims are in England? I don't know, I don't live here. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, how many Muslims in America? <laughs> Five million, six million maybe? Maybe, yeah. Are they all terrorizing everyone? No, beating no, everyone up? Not. No. Yeah, they're... they're so if, like if Islam was this religion of violence and terror... I what your opinion of them is. Do you think they're interpreting the Quran incorrectly or do you think they're... Of who? Of which ones? Oh, be specific, you have People to be specific. People like, you know, using Islam as a reason to be violent. Look, what the Quran says, oppression is worse than slaughter. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a situation where you're being oppressed, it's better to divide, die removing that oppression from yourself than to live under subjugation. Mm -hmm. That's what the Quran says. Yeah. So again, I ask you, if you're referring to what's happening in the world, yeah. Yeah, I think you'll find every single Muslim country has been invaded. Muslim countries are not invading other people. They're being invaded. Yeah. So imagine China invaded America. What would the people of America do? They get their guns out. Wouldn't they? Or would they be all be occupied? And, no, they wouldn't. Yeah. All right. So if you look at all these political situations in the world today, they've all been invaded. Even Gaza, what's been happening recently? Firing the rockets. Yeah, they're, they're, they're being oppressed. They're being cut off from the world. They're being denied. They're, they're being abused. They're, they're having their land taken from them. What do you want them to do? What, what, what have they got? They've got nothing. So they have to do something. But whatever they've got within them means they've tried. Yeah? But the question is, no, look at them firing rockets. No, why are you sieging them? It's not even your land. Why are you taking the olive groves off the farmers? Why are the settlers abusing Muslim neighbors and driving out? Why are taking over their houses? I don't hear this in the news. This is, I, don't see the, I don't see this. Yeah. So if you're talking about why Muslims are violent worldwide, yeah? Oh, well, not most of them aren't. I'd say. No, no, I'm not just saying. If you're talking about violence in the world, 
they're defending themselves. They're defending their homes. And, and unfortunately, it, we're Muslims, yeah? We're not Christians. You, you know, you, you slap our cheek yeah. and we don't give you the other one. You, you slap our cheek, we bang you in the nose. Yeah, that's it. Okay. You know, people say, oh, it's Allah's religion of peace. We say this, if you want peace with Muslims, you'll have peace. If you want war with Muslims, you'll have war. It's up to you. You understand? Yeah. But what we also say is, if you live Islam as your way of life, you get peace in your life. That's how Islam is a religion of peace. But everything, you know, Pamela Geller and Robert Spencer and your guys over there causing so much. Are you from America or Canada? America. You're American. Yeah. yeah. So, or, you know, you, you must have heard of Pamela Geller. Yeah. You know Pamela Geller? Yeah. I'm so happy you've not heard of Pamela Geller. <laughs> Robert Spencer? Oh, Alhamdulillah. You're in the right circles. So, anyway, so that just explains that. So, the Quran says defend yourself. Yeah? The Quran doesn't say go and kill people. The Quran doesn't say go force them to be Muslims. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's being portrayed in the media about Islam is not Islam. Yeah. And if someone is burying children, which are the claims, this is not Islam. But they're just claims. Yeah, and, and this, I, I'm going to, you must have heard about the Yazidi women. The what? These Yazidis, these ones driven out in um, Iraq. Okay. Have you heard about them? Apparently, these, the, this, this Islamic State went into Iraq and they, these Yazidis, the innocent Yazidis were trying to run away from them. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know the history of the Yazidis? Can I tell you something about yeah, them? Yeah, go for it. All right. Because I keep hearing this innocent, 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 and it makes me mad. Well, listen. A while ago, there was a video on YouTube, and this, and this is why you can't believe everything you see either, okay? There was a video on YouTube, and it showed, and it said an Iraqi girl being stoned to death by the tribal elders and the community for refusing to marry an 80-year-old man. And they tried to portray this with barbaric Islam, that this girl's being stoned to death, and that the graphic images, they were actually stoning her, and she was moving, and there's some, it was disgusting. But guess what? She was a Yazidi girl. And this Yazidi girl wanted to become a Muslim to marry her boyfriend. Yeah? And she'd been in security because they wanted to, the family wanted to harm her. Anyway, the family said, okay, we won't harm you, come home. When she came home, they dragged her out into the streets and a thousand villagers stoned her to death. And that's the story. Yeah. But look what the story was put out. Muslims, barbaric, nothing to do with that. She was killed for being a Muslim by non-Muslims. But there's nothing in the Quran that says go and harm civilians yeah, and, totally you know. Not. I mean, I think Islam is the only religion that dictates rules of war. Can't attack civilians, can't attack women, can't yeah. attack people working in the fields, can't cut down trees that grow fruit, and all of this business, yeah? You know, usually you burn their farms, you siege them, you kill everyone, like the Crusaders did. Islam is the only religion that has uh, rules of war. America just flattened the place. Napalm, Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Yeah, there's no men, women, or children there. They obliterate everybody. But Muslims, we can't do that. Huh? That's your question. Yeah, no, good. This is for you, inshallah. All right.